Closing arguments in the trial of Jesse Smollett are set to begin momentarily. And I got to be honest, this has gone on much longer than it should have, but not that long. It's been like a week, I guess. But based on the absurdity of Jesse Smollett's defense, the thing, the things he's done, the things his defense has done, this should have been over a long time ago. Look, I'm all about innocent until proven guilty, but Jesse Smollett, as you know, is accused of staging a hate crime, and the only defense he has is, well, let's go through it. It's going to be fun. First, his defense tried getting a mistrial, and I, 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 they, pull, they called the sidebar on the grounds that they weren't being allowed to effectively cross-examine the, one of the Osindiro brothers, one of the guys allegedly hired by Smollett. Then the defense claims the judge lunged at her, called for a mistrial, the judge said no, he didn't lunge at her, and there's no mistrial. And then, nearly in tears, Smollett's lawyer leaves the courtroom with her mother, who is sitting in the, in, in the gallery. I mean, just right off the bat, this is just TV levels of drama absurdity. Then, apparently, the defense kept arguing for the mistrial, which was denied. Oh, it gets better. Jesse Smollett apparently was scolding the prosecutor because the prosecutor read Jesse Smollett's text messages, one of which included a racial slur. And so apparently his new strategy is, I don't know, the prosecutor is racist. Jesse Smollett's story has been absolutely insane. If you've been following the case, he's saying that they were simply, they, they weren't doing a dry run for their hate crime hoax. They were simply driving around getting stoned. And the prosecutor said, you know, OK, so you're friends with one of these brothers. What's what, what's what's your relationship? Smollett's trying to make it seem like it's one of the brothers. There's two brothers, the Osendaira brothers, and that one of them was his friend and that they were intimate in bathhouses. And he's trying to say the other brother didn't like me. I didn't know anything about him. So it sounds like the, you know, Smollett's story is he was actually attacked by these men. And it was that one brother who didn't like him who staged the whole thing, or I guess encouraged his other brother to go along with it. And so then the prosecution's like, you were driving around for several hours with both brothers. And Smollett's like, yeah, I mean, it was weird. It's like, you, he was, he, Smollett's story is that, all right, hold on, hold on. So the, so the prosecution is saying that Jesse Smollett st did a dry run. They went to the area where the attack would happen several times. And uh, I, I guess as a dry run, right? The, the original story, I guess, was that they, they were there and like pointed out a surveillance camera. But I don't know what's going on with that because I'm not seeing that in the current uh, arguments. But apparently they were driving around and the prosecution's like, you drove past the spot several times. Smollett's like, yo, we were just smoking. And I, I, to be fair, it's possible. I mean, it's possible. I know people in Chicago, that's what they do. They get in their car and they drive around and they do what's called a, a clam bake. They roll up the windows. And I think that's probably extremely irresponsible. And basically Smollett's, Smollett's admitting to them driving under the influence, which sure, whatever, is something else entirely. But this has just been laughably bad. And they were, we were actually hearing that they could have, the deliberations could have be, uh, started even yesterday. But I guess now they're doing closing arguments today. And then deliberations probably, probably will start today. I can't imagine that they're going to take an hour or longer in their closing arguments like what we saw with Rittenhouse or some of these other trials. But maybe it'll be Thursday. So initially, the report I, I heard was that Smollett would be, you know, there'd be a verdict on Thursday. But one outlet did say Tuesday. Maybe that was wrong. Maybe, maybe Thursday is the right one. But there's a bigger scandal outside of all of this, and this is uh, that the Jesse Smollett trial has roped in CNN because Smollett testified that Don Lemon had advised him as to the police investigation. Hours after this was admitted on the stand by Jesse Smollett, Don Lemon goes on TV and covers this as though nothing, nothing happened, as though he's not in a conflict of interest or using his resources at a, well, I don't know how much CNN's worth. I don't want to say too much money. But a large corporate media outlet with all of their resources, he gets this information, he passes it along to Jesse Smollett to try and help him. Let's take a look at some of the news we got going on, and we'll break down some of the laughably, uh, laughably, laughably bad things, like Smollett arguing. It, it, oh, man, it's just, it's just too crazy. It's too crazy. Smollett apparently was like, I don't want to say yes or no. And the judge is like, just answer the question. Like, what do you, what, what is, Smollett was like, I'm scared to say yes or no. So this is, this is it right here. Fox News, Smollett trial, closing argument set to begin. 
after both sides rest their case. And this just kind of goes over basic details, but let's get into the, the, the ridiculousness here. Smollett blasts prosecutor for reading actors texts that include N word. Smollett sat in the witness stand where he faced tense, continued cross-examination from special prosecutor Dan Webb. Now, I want to tell you how bad it is. It's so bad that Fox News reports Jesse Smollett's testimony was unparalleled disaster. Jury will see through ruse and convict him, say experts. Closing statements in former Empire Actors trial are set to begin Wednesday. So bad it is. First, who are these experts? Fox News. Did you go and find some experts to give you confirmation bias so that your far right audience will just hear what they want to hear? Mm. Fox News. If we want to get the truth, of course, we've got to go to the Daily Beast because, of course, the left bias network certainly would be giving us their honest opinion. And I'm going to go ahead and assume that Fox is just trying to railroad a good man. And the reality is that once we get the true news, we'll see the, oh wait, what's this? Daily Beast. Jesse Smollett got totally nailed in his cross-examination. Yeah, nobody likes this guy. The left and the right have now been piling up on him, pointing out the dudes full of it. So you know what I want to do? I don't like the Daily Beast. The Daily Beast is one of the least reliable news outlets. And here's what I really love about the Daily Beast. You look at the NewsGuard certification, and it's 87.5 out of 100. And they're like, it's pretty good. Except on Wikipedia, they're like, the Daily Beast is unreliable and can't be used for biographies because <laughs> they just make things up. But let's see what they make up about Mr. Smollett in his cross-examination. The Daily Beast writes, after Jesse Smollett spilled all the tea he could on Monday, special prosecutor Dan Webb put the focus back on the attack on the Empire star that the actor allegedly staged in a brutal cross-examination on Tuesday. Webb, a lawyer's lawyer who nailed corrupt judges and cops when he served as the U.S. attorney for the district, including Chicago, and who prosecuted Ronald Reagan's national security advisor and deposed the president as special counsel in the Iran-Contra affair, shifted the focus back to the incident at hand. This after Smollett had previously shared intimate details about the relationship with one of the Osendaro brothers who have testified the actor paid them $3,500 in 2019 to stage a fake hate crime. Tuesday's cross-examination felt like a masterclass in how to zero in on details and seal the deal. After a day of salacious speculation, innuendo, and tabloid fodder, Webb wanted to remind the jury that they were what, what they were here to decide upon. Webb focused on the scene of the incident and the actions leading up to it. Evidence provided during the trial showed that Smollett and the Osendaro brothers drove multiple times in the preceding days around the exact location where the actor would later claim he was physically attacked, had bleach poured on him and a noose put around his neck in the frigid wee hours of January 29th, 2019. Smollett had previously testified that he solely worked with Abimbola, the Osendaro brother. He also testified he had a adult, intimate and drug induced relationship with and that he didn't get along with the older brother, Olabinjo, who Smollett claimed had nothing to do with his life. Uh, Abimbola, uh, who also appeared as an extra uh, on Empire, has denied that they were intimate. So why was Olabinjo in the car with the two men around the area in question for a workout that didn't happen? Quote, you got so stoned, you decided when you got to Streeterville that you were too stoned to work out? No, Smollett replied back. I've worked out many times high on weed. It certainly wasn't that. The actor claims that he found it weird that Olabinjo had accompanied him in Abimbola, and that at the time, he said the workout didn't happen because he had an interview to prepare for. But as Webb kept pressing him on specifics, Smollett grew more and more visibly frustrated. Let me just point out. So you get in the vehicle with the guys because you're going to go work out, but you know you have an interview later, so you just drive around smoking weed. Just say it, bro. You were not going to work out. These guys were just giving you drugs. I mean, he's already admitted that. Just make it simple. One notable example was when the prosecution pressed Smollett to acknowledge that he drove around the area not once, but three times with the Osendaro brothers. Do you have any reason to disagree with police testimony that you passed by the intersection three times? Webb asked. I don't know, Smollett replies. I circled around the block. How long were you there? Smollett says, well, you have the surveillance. You tell me it was three years ago. You know, it's funny, man. I get it. It was three years ago. You may not remember, but dude, you are the reason this was delayed for so long. You. So don't, 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 don't play that. Now look, innocent until proven guilty. I get it. The state's got to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt. But I think we've seen enough, to be completely honest, that the more and more this drags on, Smollett is guilty of this. 
I think a jury should decide. And I think it's fair to say innocent until proven guilty. Or interestingly, it's more like innocent until found guilty by a jury of your peers, I guess, because, you know, innocent people do go to jail. But let's just be real, man. There are certain things that are beyond uh, uh, argument. And, and, and if their best defense was the judge lunged at me, we need a mistrial. And, you know, uh, the prosecutor said the N word or whatever. I'm just like, OK, we get it. You got nothing. You have nothing. We know you got nothing. The police got the evidence. Let's just get it done with. How about that? I, I, I'm curious, though, if they're showing the police surveillance footage. But this story that these, these two uh, Nigerian brothers, one of whom was friends with Smollett, tracked him down in the wee hours of the morning to stage an attack against him as, as Trump supporters is just laughably dumb. But I'll tell you this, if the, if the Osindiro brothers truly are uh, um, experts in scamming, they pulled it off perfectly. Why? Well, think about it. If Jesse Smollett were telling the truth, it would be that these two brothers knew exactly how to stage an event to such a degree that Smollett would never be believed. Could you imagine that the Osandara brothers being like, here's the plan. Now we're going to put on masks and gloves and wear hats. And then we're going to go and attack him in the wee hours of the morning. We're going to wait for him to want to get some eggs. And then as soon as he goes, we'll be waiting for him. And then when we attack him, He'll tell everybody that two Trump supporters did it, that they were white. But then when it turns out it was us, because everyone will find out we did it, they'll think he's a liar. That's the stupidest plan I've ever heard. And it makes no sense. It's predicated upon the fact that the Osendaro brothers would have been caught doing this. So what is his story? These guys planned on getting caught to frame Jesse? Yeah, dude. Here we go. This is where it gets funny. It was clear that Webb had a nerve with Smollett after the actor tried to cast doubt on Abimbola's testimony by claiming the two had been in an intimate relationship. Webb put the focus back on Smollett, pressing him in an intense series of back and forth exchanges about the specific details of the night in question. These included whether Smollett thought a Walgreens was open for 24 hours, why he was looking for eggs in the middle of the night, whether or not he'd asked Abimbola about a workout uh, that night, and on and on until the actor seemed to hit a breaking point. Quote, I'm just concerned about answering yes or no, Smollett told Judge James Lynn after Webb began to strike one of his responses as non-responsive. Please, please, Lynn told him. It's the same for all witnesses. It's not personal to you. The lawyer asks a question. You answer them. In a final round, in a final round of back and forth, Webb pressed Smollett on the attack itself and why Smollett changed his initial description of his attackers to the police from white to being pale skinned, also which is not true. By the end of his cross-examination, Webb had left many lingering questions about Smollett's account of what happened for jurors to consider. Among them, if Smollett had delayed a workout with Abimbola that night, as he testified, why were there, why were there no follow-up messages or calls about that? Let's put it this way. So after the attack, or I'm sorry, before it, apparently Smollett was on the phone with Abimbola about working out, they say. That's what he said. I was talking about working out. But then he got attacked and they never actually got to work out. So then uh, why would he not call him back and be like, hey, here's what's happening. I was attacked, bro, because it's all a lie and we all know it. As Webb wrapped up his questioning, he asked if Smollett is, uh, if getting a few bruises had really impacted his acting career. Mr. Webb, I have a scar under my eye that looks like a bag for the rest of my life, Smollett replied, also mentioning a black circle on his face. It's absolutely a problem. Webb then showed Smollett a photo of him during his controversial February Good Morning America interview with Robin Roberts a few weeks after the attack. In the photo, Smollett did not appear to have any of the markings he just described. Smollett clapped back, asking Webb if he knows that what Hollywood interviews are like and insisting that makeup provided to him on set makes me look much better. Damn, Jesse, how did you let him get you like that? So saith Daily Beast. Um, if he had a scar or a ring on his face, but in an interview, he could be uh, given makeup. Why could he not be given makeup in any one of these movies? What, what, what was it? I, I love uh, seeing movies like Paul Giamatti because he's bald and they give him hair or, or Stanley Tucci in The Hunger Games. It's called Hollywood makeup and special effects. It's not hard to do. Once Webb finished, defense attorney Nenya Uch followed up with redirect questions for Smollett involving his, his communications with the Osandira brothers. They were fine and fair, but the damage had already been done. As it appears, the once celebrated star may have bitten off more than he could chew by choosing to take the stand. Well, what more could he do? What else could he do, more importantly? He's got no evidence. 
Everything stacked up against him. He's got two witnesses saying he paid them. Is corroborating evidence. His story makes no sense. His story never made any sense. The dude lied, and the establishment lined up behind him to push the lie. How amazing and gullible must these people be to blindly just believe all of this stuff? When the story of Jesse Smollett happened, it was the most ridiculous thing many of us had heard, and people didn't believe. You kidding me? Two Trump supporters recognizing Jesse Smollett. Tracking him down and yelling, this is MAGA country in downtown Chicago? You can say it a million times. It gets funnier every time. But here's where we get to the next big scandal. CNN silence over Jesse and Don. Anderson Cooper and Don Lemon shows both ignore Empire actors claim that Lemon texted him during fake race attack scandal. We have this tweet from Kenneth P. Vogel. On Monday, Jesse Smollett testified in court that Don Lemon advised Smollett on the police investigation into his hate crime report in 2019. Hours later, Don Lemon discussed the trial on a CNN show, but did not respond to the testimony about his role. Now, to be fair, it could partly be because, well, they produced the shows and they weren't paying attention to the trial. Either way, what Don Lemon did was wrong. Using CNN resources to aid someone that he knew, it's not nearly as bad as what Chris Cuomo did with his brother Andrew, but it's still pretty bad. Well, Now, casting all doubt aside, Don Lemon and Anderson Cooper and CNN and all of them and Brian Seltzer, they all have an opportunity to now come out and address what Jesse Smollett said. What do we get? Well, from uh, from Anderson Cooper and Don Lemon, whole lot of nothing. Daily Mail reports CNN had its legal experts blast Jesse Smollett's testimony on two of its flagship shows Monday night with Don Lemon ignoring his own alleged involvement in the story while inviting a lawyer on to express doubts about the actor's claims. On Monday, Smollett claimed to court that the CNN star had texted him in the wake of the alleged February hate attack uh, that Chicago uh, police weren't taking his claim seriously. But Lemon avoided that allegation during his report on the trial on Monday and again failed to touch on it on Tuesday. Criticism of Smollett's defense strategy at, at, his, uh, at his trial for allegedly faking a racist and homophobic hate crime began around 8.40 p.m. Tuesday when Anderson Cooper's legal analyst Sarah Azari offered her scathing take on the 39-year-old's day in court. Sarah, I'm wondering what you make of Smollett's testimony on the whole. Did you think he was very credible? Did you think he helped his case? Anderson asked Azari. He heard his case. He got up and testified in a compelling way and a calm way, but he's a trained actor, right? So the idea that he is a self-made man, he's hustled, he's worked hard, trust me, believe me, don't convict me. Okay, then you get to the explanation part, which completely fell flat. Azari said that she was confused by Smollett's refusal to report the alleged February 2019 hate attack to cops, despite what he claimed was its severity. She also took exception to the claim that he wanted to buy herbal steroids off the two brothers accused of attacking him, one of whom was actually said to be a lover of Smollett's. So we get it. We get it. They go on to say that Azari did not mince words. We understand that CNN was was um, very critical of Smollett. And I find this interesting, considering how, ma- how many people in the mainstream were actively defending and supporting and propping up the lies from Jesse Smollett. The interesting thing here is that they're not bringing up the fact that they've been accused and they've been implicated themselves. Don Lemon also let his guest, defense lawyer Joey Jackson, to stick the boot into Smollett on his show an hour later. No mention was made of Smollett's claim in court Monday that Lemon had texted him in the aftermath of the alleged attack to warn that Chicago police weren't taking his claim seriously. Jackson said he found Smollett's version of events murky and pulled apart multiple inconsistencies in his story. He then added, quote, so when you have to explain, 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 this is way too much. Explaining to me to the point that the narrative is inconsistent. It does in the end, uh, uh, at the end of the day, actor, talented or not, it's too much to overcome with respect to facts that are compellingly against him. Jackson said he expected jurors would find prosecutors' versions of events more compelling than Smollett's, indicating that he thought the actor was headed for a conviction. It's a felony charge. Six felony charges. That's, that's prison. Lemon, who was also gay, is said to have warned Smollett in 2019. Smollett told his trial yesterday that Lemon warned him. See, Chicago, PD, uh, Chicago police detectives had told him they didn't believe his story. Lemon didn't mention it on his show last night during a minutes long segment with reporter Omar Jimenez, who had been at the trial. Instead, the pair discussed the day's events. It comes less than a week after CNN fired Chris Cuomo, another primetime host, for advising his brother, Governor Andrew Cuomo, in his scandal, crafting statements for him and using his journalistic sources to investigate some of his accusers. Now, to be fair, 
what went down with Chris and Andrew was substantially more egregious, in my opinion. This is a guy who's got a family conflict of interest. It's a guy who's giving privy information to his brother, helping him navigate this space. With Smollett and Don Lemon, it's literally like these guys know each other, they're friends, and he was giving him private information. Inappropriate, yes. Should be addressed, yes. Well, let me give you that opportunity, Jeff Zucker. Zucker tells CNN staff Chris Cuomo will not be paid severance and that he wishes he'd taken action sooner. Uh, he, he wishes he'd taken action to fire $6 million a year star sooner. $6 million a year for Chris Cuomo. Talk about insane, right? Well, Zucker, you now have the opportunity to get ahead of all of this and fire Don Lemon. But he won't. Because the only reason he went after Chris Cuomo is because he had to, because evidence got released. Well, closing arguments are starting today. Jesse Smollett will likely be convicted, but will the judge actually hand down any strong sentences? Will it just be probation? I don't know. I think Smollett will be found guilty. I'll be surprised if he won't be, but Smollett will be a felon for the rest of his life. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.